I'm Owen Big Line. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, let's do a quick blog here on good stratas versus bad stratas. I've talked about this many times in the last 10 years on my blog here. Talk a bit about it in my book as well, how important that is. That's probably one of the most important things when you're buying a stratified property, a, a townhouse or a condo. The most, a couple of things, location for sure, location, 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 the golden rule of real estate, that's number one. But right close second or right with it is, you know, the strata corporation you're buying into. <laughs> that's incredibly important because there are good stratas, okay stratas, and then stratas that are just a complete mess that, you know, I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. And there's a lot of those out there and I see them selling. It's funny because I see stratas that I know have got incredible, they, they have not been well run, not well managed, little to nothing in the CRF. Uh, you know, the, the, the makeup of the ownership, uh, it's mostly investors perhaps in the building, not a very good uh, um, makeup of, of the strata council. And that makes a huge difference. You know, uh, some strata councils run with an iron fist and, and uh, I'll give you an example. I've got a number of older stratas, including the one I'm in, pretty well heeled ownership base in here. We've got a lot of retirees in my building and semi-retired. Those guys are great because they volunteer for strata and they've got the time. They, they, they enjoy doing it, keeps them busy. Those are the best. Some stratas where it's mostly uh, investor owned, uh, tough to get anyone to be on council because it's, it's a lot of work to be a president or a vice president or a secretary or treasurer. And it shows in a lot of these stratas. They put a lot of it onto the property manager. And <laughs> that's a whole other story there. There's good property managers, not so good property managers. All the property managers are overworked. The typical property manager ha isn't just your building, your strata. He's got 30 that, he's, that are in his portfolio. It starts with the, uh, with the ownership, the, the strata council, and who you have on there, and what kind of hours and time they're putting into it. But I'm going to do another, some more blogs on this later this summer. I've talked about it many times before about good stratas, bad stratas, but I, you know, I see stratas. There's a number of older stratas that are absolute, they're way underrated. Uh, uh, they are proactive stratas, large contingency funds, t lots of work has been done. They've done elevators, they've done new windows, balcony upgrades, lobby upgrades. They've got a 1.5, $2 million in the CRF. Their, uh, their maintenance fees are on a two bed might be $650, $675, which some people would think, oh, that's high. When if you dig a little deeper, you'd realize that about 180 every month is going straight into the CRF. And the things that they're voting on every year, like new emergency generators and putting in electric vehicle charging and new fire dampening systems, you know, running three, four hundred thousand dollars, they're taking straight out of the CRF and they're not levying. Then I'll see building two blocks away selling for almost the same square footage that is totally opposite. None of the major stuff has been addressed. They've got uh, windows that are going to need to be done soon, new roof, the elevators are, are breaking down, uh, and no money in the CRF, and the maintenance fee, sure, they're $150 less, but it's because they're not putting anything into the CRF. You're, you're going to buy one of those, and the day of reckoning is going to be coming. You're going to be looking at a $100,000 levy on those two-bedroom units, because eventually they're going to have to get it done. And they sell at almost the same price per square foot as the grade A strata that's had everything done. So you better hire a good realtor and or, and or do your due diligence. Read the documents, read the depreciation report, read the engineer's reports. It's all in there. Uh, and do the math on what have they done and what still needs to be done and what is the cost going forward, how much is in the CRF, and what is the track record of the the council on voting for these things and how are they paying for them? Are they levying everything or are in the minutes are you seeing in the AGMs that things are getting overturned? I see many stratas that need window replacements or elevator upgrades, which could be a million dollars or more. Window upgrades could be three or four million dollars and they get overturned. They can't get a 75% vote. That's trouble. That's a red flag. Uh, so make sure you're realtor and you are doing your due diligence. I'll do another blog on this, you know, 
uh, later this summer. I've done many before, but I'm working on some stuff now. Final thing I'll just leave you guys with, because a lot of people ask me, you know, I talk a lot about the long-term benefits of buying and holding real estate. Markets go up and down and, you know, this may not be duplicated moving forward in the next 30 years, but I still think it's going to be pretty darn good. Every week, you know, I'm doing CMAs uh, for listings. Clients will call me and say, oh, and I want to sell my house in, in the west side, or I want to sell my Mount Pleasant duplex or, or detached home or a home out in Richmond or my condo in Yaletown or my condo in, in uh, Coal Harbor. So every week I'm doing several CMAs. So, you know, here's one. Every uh, month I'll get a number of these where the, the, the potential client will call me up, give me the address of the property, and they've owned this sometimes for 20, 30, 40 years. You know, it's clear title. Uh, they don't have a mortgage on it anymore. Sometimes it's their principal residence. Sometimes it's an investment unit. But after 20 or 25 years, it's incredible the long-term returns. I, and this, I'll just give you a typical one here that I just had to do today. So I, I'm shooting videos today. Let's just throw it out. This is a one-bedroom, one-bath condo in Richmond. Uh, this guy wants to sell it. It's been an investment property for him. He bought it in 1992 for $83,000. It was at the time uh, six years old, wood frame uh, in central Richmond, the Brig House area. Uh, it was listed for 84.9. Sorry, he got it listed for 84.9, bought it for 83.1. Uh, it was 645 square feet, one bed, one bath with parking. So I'm getting ready now to do the CMA. And we're going to list this in the low 400s. So there you, there you go. This guy has never lived in the unit. He's bought it, put a tenant in it from day one. He's never had a problem renting it. And uh, he did a little bit of renovation work to it about six years ago. New flooring, paint, updated the appliances. But tells me total about $15,000 he's put in. He got lucky here. I didn't sell him this unit. This strata, he, he really hasn't been hit with much at all in the way of special levies. Uh, 300 here, 400 there. Uh, you know, he says basically, it's just basically been his maintenance fees. Nothing major. The roof, uh, about, uh, he told me about eight years ago, he got a small levy for that. And the rest was taken out of the CRF. So, you know, paid 83,000. And it's 30 years to, to the day almost here that he bought it. And uh, we're going to sell this in the low 400. So do the math. A nice return. <laughs> Pretty nice return. This is what buying and holding, and I see these all the time. I've seen ones, you, you want to see a detached stuff. It's, you know, guys buying homes back in the 90s for 350, 400. I had a house in Richmond that I listed last year. The guy bought it about 15 years ago for 475 and I just sold it for 18. So, you know, this is the what you can look forward to by just buying and holding real estate. Put if it's in principal residence, enjoy it. If it's an investment, put a tenant in it and let the tenant do all the heavy lifting. Now, are you going to get a 450% return over the next 30 years going forward? It might not be that good, as good. But I always use that rule of thumb that you buy a house today, and I'm, this is using very conservative numbers, it'll double about every 18 to 20 years. It could double in nine or 10 years. But I, I'm a conservative guy. I don't like to, I like to uh, under promise, over deliver. But if you bought a million dollar Yale Town to bed today, it'll probably be worth $2 million or more 18 years from now. And that's using, if you do the math on the, on the, uh, you know, the uh, compounded annual growth rate, it probably equates to what some guy can do it for me, three and a half percent year over year or something, which a lot of people I see on my comment boards, you know, say, Hey, that's not, not all that great. I've got stocks that have done way better than that. Well, you're right. Real estate is slow and steady, uh, but the big thing, of course, with real estate is it's tangible and you're using the leverage, of course. Uh, that's what, what kind of supercharges those returns. But again, that's what real estate long term looks like. There's a real life example. Maybe I'll do more of these later this year and over the coming years. I should probably do one of these every now and again, just to you know help you guys stay the course of what you can look forward to. Buying some of these guys that I sell that have owned these homes for 15, 20, 30, 40 years and the type of capital gains they're looking at. It's incredible. I'm Owen Big Line. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to all my new subscribers. I'll see you next week.